Mellanox cards. Okay, so these are my two remaining 10 gig uh, Mellanox uh, Connect X2 cards. They're they're SFP Plus transceiver ports uh, with uh, and some SFP Plus. Uh, this is a, an NHR branded uh, 10 gig uh, single mode transceiver. This is an Intel branded 1 gig slash 10 gig uh, multi mode transceiver. Uh, I have them here because in the server rack. That is a bright light for you guys. I have my new card. This is a Chelsea uh, 10 gig card. Uh, this actually came out of a storage array, but it's fine because it still works. It's just it's got tuning for iSCSI and that kind of jazz, which I kind of chuckle about. It would be better off having this in one of my storage systems, but PFSense uh, doesn't like the Mellanox cards, uh, and for good reason. But it's not that they're bad. It's just that from a from a standpoint of a, a firewall, having a card that is no longer supported, that is outdated in your firewall is not uh, they've decided that it's not the best idea so they will not uh, they don't have the drivers anymore for the old Mellanox Connect X2 you get a Connect X3 or 4 it might still work uh, this one I had a little bit of trouble with because this card uh, one of the things that this card does when it boots and loads its driver is checks its firmware against the driver. The driver itself has a firmware for the newer version of the card. Unfortunately, these older cards, specifically in uh, in, in PFSense, I didn't test them out with FreeNAS, uh, so I can't say BSD in general, but uh, PFSense uh, is it doesn't have the it doesn't have the controller. Uh, the, the control software to update these older generation cards. Uh, the newer generation cards, it, it has the controller software to do it, and they, they look very similar. The issue I ran into with that card is that the, the software wasn't able to update the firmware, uh, which was a little bit of a pain in the ass, because you scratch your head going, but the software is there, but it's not able to talk to it, why not? When you look a little deeper, you find that the software for this generation cards has one name, and the newer generation cards has an extra letter in the in the command. Uh, and then when I dug a little further, I'm like, why are these different names? And it's because they're actually different generations of the same uh, tool. Uh, the older tool uh, is available on other uh, operating systems. So I literally dropped in a Linux Mint Live CD, and it booted right up, found the card, loaded the new firmware, and then once I did that, pulled it back up into PFSense, it came up, found the card, didn't complain about the driver needing to be up or the, the firmware didn't need to be updated. I installed the whole thing, turned everything on, and it, and it works. Hasn't given me a problem since. Uh, so that's a little bit of a workaround that we had to do. Uh, and it really just was the, the, when I dug into it, it had to do with the software that comes with the driver. Uh, the new version doesn't have support for the old generation cards. Uh, so that was a little bit of an issue, but we got that up and running. So now, uh, I am currently running. Internal network is on 10 gig fiber. So I got my multi-mode fiber here. This is the connection I have going back to the internet. And then uh, this one here is running on 2 gig. Uh, I had some problems with the PCI Express bus on this uh, on this card, or on this system. Uh, so I yanked all of those out, uh, and I've got two... Uh, gig ports, so this machine is currently running on a 2 gig lag, which will go into an explanation of how I set that up later on. This system down here has got a, a 4 gig ports in a lag, and then it's got the 10 gig card over here. I was kind of laughing when I was I was looking at it, I'm like, you know, it would be really funny if I could make this a 14 gig lag, but that, that doesn't work, so I mean, it was, it was, it was a, like I said, a laughable idea. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that these are gigabit, these is 10 gigabit, they don't, they're not compatible in the, in the link aggregation. Uh, so that doesn't work, and it's, it's, uh, it's sad. It would've been really cool if it worked, but no, it's, it's fundamental differences in things. It's like 10, 10 100 versus gigabit, a totally different type of signaling, it's just, it just doesn't work. Anyway, and then this down here, this is my virtual machine server. It's got a 10 gig uh, single mode transceiver in the Mellanox card. Uh, it's currently running Zen server. Uh, I'm probably gonna dump it and put uh, put Proxmox back on here. I had an issue with it, but I'm like, yeah, it's okay, I'm fine. I, I, I might, plug all of these in because then as a virtual machine I could actually dedicate one of these ports uh, to uh, any given server which would be which would be kind of nice and nifty so 
there we are. Uh, that's the update on the on the server environment. Uh, but here is the giant whiteboard. So the other day, I was I was streaming. Uh, I was playing some Elite Dangerous, and I, I ran into a, a mild issue with the game. And that issue was that the servers had to go down for maintenance. I was like, but, but I'm playing right now. Like, I just started the stream. I was like, screw it. Whatever, fine. Uh, somebody asked a question about jumbo packets. And I, I was like, I, 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 no. No. And it's not that the guy is, is dumb. He's just, he didn't know. And so we decided to educate him. And it was fine. So, you know who you are? Dude, thanks for the question. It was a good, it really is a good question. Uh, and, it, and it gives a, a, uh, an avenue for explanation of, of beyond. And if, if you're watching that stream, you know that it was way beyond. So I, I came over here to the whiteboard. I was like, pull the, pull the Rick Sanchez moment. I just said, uh, you know what? Let me get my whiteboard. This is a long time coming. Uh, so I pulled it out and I ran through an explanation of, of jumbo frames versus regular frames. Uh, and, and, you know, MTU, and, and that led into a conversation about switching and how switching works and what a hub is versus a switch versus a bridge uh, versus a router uh, and, and all of those things in between. And and I always kind of laugh because Layer 3 switches, people are like, oh, Layer 3 switches are great. I'm like, eh, eh. no. No. And, and anyway, I, I'll go into a long explanation as to why I don't like Layer 3 switching. Uh, later, and, and it's because it is layer 3 switching. It is not layer 3 routing. And switches do not operate on a, a, a layer 3. They operate on layer 2. And that's... Uh, there. There's The way it does it is what scares me. Uh, but anyway, I'll go into something about that later on. Uh, anyway, I went into a long explanation about IP addressing, and uh, somebody asked a question about IPv6, and that's like, yeah, it's a whole other can of worms that'll take too long to explain. But I spent a couple hours kind of rambling about all of the different bits and pieces, and I decided that I'm going to go ahead and set up a series of videos covering just network fundamentals, things that I find interesting, uh, that are probably a lot more technical than most people are used to, and it will kind of just cover what what all this stuff is and how it, it works. So look forward to those. Those are going to be fun. Um, I've got to be out of town uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got to go and install... Uh, it's a cosmetics shop. They needed they needed my expertise to install some things. Anyway, so I've got to go do that, and then I'll be back. Um, I should have one or two of these networking fundamental videos pushed out before then. That's, that's the idea. That's the goal. Uh, and that's that's what's going on so otherwise 10 gig networking and i'm still gonna get something where i gotta get this equalogic online i'm gonna plug it in i'm hoping to get a full set of lag across all eight ports but no anyway until next time uh my name is kane uh check out dermalarmor.com i've got a i've got a cane train shirt there and i've got my my number four which is more of a running ascii art joke uh, than anything else, and then I've got some vinyl stickers with the cane train, and that's not all I have, well, that's all I have right now, but I have some ideas, I just need to sell some stock off, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, uh push some more ideas out there. One of them, the one that says sold out, don't wait for it to come into play, because I need to sell the other ones before I can buy that one, uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe something, maybe something magical will happen soon, and I'll be able to push that one out, and then we can all things will be moving forward anyway. Uh, I'm rambling a bit more. Uh, check out links in down below. I got Twitter, Patreon, uh, my, I think my Facebook on there. Uh, so, like, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm out. I've been rambling too long. My name is Kane, and I'm here to help you.